Hello, it's Sadie with Sage Acupuncture in Austin, Texas, and it's PCOS Awareness Month, so I wanted to chat a little bit about polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a pretty common endocrine and metabolic syndrome that impacts about 17% of people with ovaries during their reproductive years um, and is associated with insulin resistance and inflammation and even type 2 diabetes. So some of the most common symptoms uh, that are associated with PCOS, although it's important to note that not everyone who's diagnosed with PCOS has every one of these symptoms, are things like uh, small cysts um, seen on the ovaries in an ultrasound, or excess androgens like testosterone that cause things like um, excess acne or hair growth, um, and things like um, delayed ovulation and delayed menstrual cycles or absent menstrual cycles, which clearly can cause a disruption when conception is the goal. It can also um, impact things like mood. Um, so you can see so many different aspects of our lives can in fact be impacted by PCOS. So some of the tools that we can use to um, counter this are things like diet and nutrition. And I think that it's important when we're talking about um, insulin resistance that's associated with PCOS and um, obesity. Again, this is not always the case. You can have atypical or um, slim PCOS. Uh, however, when we're talking about insulin resistance, this is not always a reaction to something that you did or your own choices. But um, in fact, we see that the way your grandparents ate impacts the way your insulin works to break down um, foods and sugars in your body. So although it's very challenging and we have to sort of rise to the occasion, um, I, I want people to really be clear that it, it is something that is often inherited as opposed to um, just our own choices are to blame, right? So then nutritionally, what we wanna focus on are whole foods, tons and tons of vegetables, very clean proteins, good fats, and a minimal amount of carbohydrates that come from whole grains or even starchy vegetables. Of course, um, this is easier said than done. And what we do in our practice is take you from where you are and really support you to make those changes in a methodical and sustainable way. Uh, then we are looking at exercise, which has been shown to be really a wonderful um, support tool. And when it comes to exercise, the most important thing to focus on is consistency, even over something like endurance or intensity. And so that looks like exercising four or five times a week with a moderate intensity, which is about 50 to 70% of your maximum endurance. And in that way, we are having our blood be oxygenated and circulation improved. Um, we have an endorphin release, which can help with mood. And we are also eliminating waste through our exhalation as well as sweating. So really important to do to do uh, proper exercise consistently. Um, acupuncture has been shown to be incredibly beneficial when it comes to PCOS. And even though just a few treatments have been shown to do this, really consistent acupuncture is key when we're looking at hormone regulation or um, conception. And it's a great addition to any health regimen, but when we're looking at PCOS, it's a phenomenal um, support tool. And then lastly, for almost all of our PCOS patients, I will recommend a supplement called inositol. And this is a vitamin-like substance that 
um, is found in nature. It's found in some foods, but can be taken in supplement form and has been shown to be incredibly beneficial for hormone regulation, as well as conception and fertility issues. And it's also very, very gentle. It's so safe that it can be used during pregnancy. It can be used um, while nursing. So uh, it's a lovely um, support tool and easy to take as well. Beyond that, I really do like to sit down and talk to people and get to know them in their unique circumstance um, to recommend any other supplements or herbs or lifestyle guidance beyond that. But if you are looking for more answers and guidance, uh, feel free to reach out. We are always here and happy to help.